We landed in your community on September 7th, 2014, unfamiliar with our surroundings and unclear to what our focus in Whitless Bay would be. Field school was new to most of us. Our first encounter with the residents was here in the community center, hard to believe three weeks ago. Friendly faces, conversations, music, cards, and even a dance were in store for us. It was a great icebreaker. One of our goals was to collect and document information related to people interacting in their buildings and landscape and how culture in the community has evolved over time. We explored traditional beliefs and customs by talking to people and hearing and recording their stories. Here we are now at the end of our three weeks and in reflection, what have we observed and learned? We want to show you a variety of pictures and stories about our visit to Beatles Bay. We hope you will enjoy. In our first week here, we learned the basics of interviewing techniques and photography. Dr. Guha Shankar, Dr. John Mannion, photographer Brian Ricks, and folklorist Lisa Wilson dropped in to help us on our way. In our second week in Whitless Bay, we focused on building documentation. Dr. Edward Chapel joined us from Colonial Williamsburg, Virginia, where he works as an architectural historian. We explored several of the older buildings in Whitless Bay, measuring all the while. Ed gave us a great demonstration of how to create thorough and meticulous floor plans. We were then sent out in groups of two or three to make floor plans of our own. Sheila and Mike Ryan, Bernadette Madigan, and Barry Norris were kind enough to open up their homes for us as we measured every nook and cranny of their houses in exhaustive detail. These are the floor plans we created. We also measured a number of sheds, fish stages, stables, and root cellars around the community. This gave us a real sense of how these buildings were used in the past and of their continuing function in Whitless Bay. We made floor plans of the yard's fish stage and shed, Sheila and Mike Ryan's root cellar and stable, Barry Norris's stable, the Cary root cellar, and the Foley fish stage. I just think that, like I said at the outset, it was something that came out of an expression of people feeling maybe full bellies and a full glass and celebration and coming together. I think all of those words are representative of a time and an occasion. Three staff and said one time, there was nothing put on art like that to frighten him, but he was wrong. There seems put on art to frighten you. I guess it's just uh, knowing the past and the way people lived in your community and how how the cultural how the culture of their culture has come down through the people who live here now. A number of us who are in the uh, on the committee are not from here, but somehow we're, we're sort of enchanted with the whole idea of the history of Willis Bay. So. I know I try to talk him out of doing anything underwater, and this day he said, I think it was 15, 14 or 15, he said, Mom, we need to go for a drive. And I said, oh, I'm not going for no drive now, I just want to go home. Come on. And so anyway, he said, let's go down on the wharf. 
So I went down on the wharf and uh, it was, it was, uh, it was night time. He said, just look out at that harbour. And I'm thinking, yes, yes. Look at the way those lights are shining on the ocean, he said. He said, mom, that's where my heart is. And he said, if I could wake up every morning and know that I'm working on the water, I'd be a happy man. And he said, money's not everything. telling me today or the other day when I was telling her about you coming I should tell you this story so it didn't happen to me but it happened and there was this friend of hers and um, there was a group of them going out in the mummers so she made him rig up as a, a woman and she made him put on high heels and they walked you know what the harbour's like <laughs> they walked from here right across the bridge and down the north side. He was about a week getting over it. He could hardly walk. <laughs> I can just picture it now. That's the truth, you know now a man trying to walk in high heels. Oh. Young people like yourselves come in here, and you'll give us a perspective that we don't have ourselves. It's like what Dina said when Jurgen and Elfie showed up here. They observe something or recognize something that we, when you live in the forest, you don't appreciate the trees, if you know what I'm saying. So, if when you guys will, will uh, you know, collect your interviews, do your work, and then you'll uh, you'll come away with uh, your own, you know, feel for the place and your own. Uh, take on, on what we are, what we have, and maybe we'll we'll benefit from that. In that we'll we'll have a greater appreciation for what we do have. We would all like to say thank you so much for welcoming us into your homes, your activities, and your lives. You've been incredibly generous with your time and your knowledge. Thank you for teaching us how to play cards, dabbing alongside us at bingo, demonstrating your crafting prowess, feeding us tea, coffee, and delicious baked goods, giving us the products of your garden and allowing us into your homes. A special thank you to Colleen Hanrahan for allowing us to stay in the convent. It was a novel and enjoyable experience. Thank you to the mayor, Sebastian Desprez, and the members of the town council. Thank you also to Claire, our ever-positive teaching assistant and mother superior. Also, thank you to our various instructors in the delicate art of folklore fieldworking. Dr. Gerald Potius, Dr. John Mannion, Dr. Guha Shankar from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., Dr. Ed Chappell from the Colonial Williamsburg, Virginia, Dale Jarvis, Newfoundland's Provincial Folklorist, Lisa Wilson, Folklorist with the Heritage Foundation of Newfoundland and Labrador, Brian Ricks, Professional Photographer, Brittany Roberts, and John LaDuke, Folklore Graduate Students.